Hi, I'm Deborah Holchip, editor of Michigan Today. In this episode of Listen in Michigan, I'm chatting with John Pasquale, director of the Michigan Marching Band. Okay, if you're listening to this before Saturday at noon, we're getting ready for the Ohio State game. And you better believe these musicians are ready. Anticipation? Running high. Super high. For some of these kids, it's their last home football game as a member of the marching band. For others, it's their first Ohio State game in the big house. For all of us fans, it is, or was, depending on your listening habits, the last home football game of the decade. For me, this is an excuse to officially crash a band practice and just be near the energy these talented musicians create. I really can't tell you. I seriously go nuts for a drum line. I cannot help it. I'm walking toward Ravelli Hall right now. It's like quarter to five on a Thursday afternoon. Members of the drum corps are out in front of the building just playing around on their instruments. I swear to God, nothing beats walking down Division and hearing these sounds. It's just college town, USA. And I will not pretend this is my first marching band podcast. Jim Tobin has spoken to Albert Ehrenheim, who perfected the famous Let's Go Blue riff. And I've hung out with Jerry Billick, who arranged some of the most iconic versions of marching band productions you've ever heard. Check the show notes for those clips if you haven't heard them. But frankly, I just wanted to speak to the latest guy who is following in the footsteps okay. of the legendary William Ravelli and George Cavender. Who out here is marching their final pregame at home? For a guy whose only other job has been teaching public school in Dallas, John Pasquale seems bewildered at his good fortune while proving he is absolutely up to the task. I mean, he is a tuba player with three college degrees. He's an international conductor, author, lecturer, and he holds the Donald R. Shepard Chair in Conducting here at U of M. He serves as Associate Professor of Conducting, Associate Director of Bands, and director of the Michigan Marching Band, as I said, and also athletic bands. If you're listening to this, you're probably a hardcore band fan like me, or possibly a former musician. I'm sure you had an amazing time marching across the field in your polyester uniform, rain or shine, snow, all of it. You have memories and connections of your time in Ann Arbor that are beyond compare. In a word, jealous. But that's neither here nor there. As the home football season wraps up, I figured we'd check in with John and the band for the final home game of the decade. Here's John. I just love driving by the, the field and hearing practice, whether it's first thing in the morning. I'm like, yay! On Saturday morning, there coming. is no better place to be than on a college campus on a Saturday morning. I would argue this one for obvious reasons, but I, I mean, I am biased. But there's just something about the tradition of the MMB that has been so well established. And I mean, the band program here at Michigan has basically put college band on the map mm-hmm. and just with the, with the tradition and the history and legacy. And there's just something about a sunrise happening. You're hearing the victors playing and the fans are cheering. Oh, it's such a great thing. Why do we love it so much? You, I love you it. You know, it's people ask a lot. I think it's an identity to people. It's almost like in their DNA. I mean, we have a flag that is an identity to Mm -hmm. us as, or any country, any citizen has their identity visually through a flag. Orally, however, Mm -hmm. we we have anthems, we have songs, or we, in our case, we have, have school songs that are the embodiment of the institution. Okay. And I think that anywhere... In the world, bum, 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 bing, bum. Anyone is going to recognize it immediately, and it brings up your uh, memories, your um, your probably livelihood. It's so interconnected. Yeah, and it's just fascinating. I'm I'm all over the world, and like I was in the airport in Shanghai, just on the escalator, 
and I hear someone bum 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 beep. I'm like in the middle of the, like because <laughs> you had a shirt. I had my uh, I had some M on. Um, Love it. It was hilarious. It's it's just so cool. Plus, even in the generic sense, beyond Michigan marching band, like just the sound of the drum line, like just the guys just your, get you going, band, doesn't it? Yeah, just playing around, tapping their drums. You know, it's like just the rhythm of it. Something about the rhythm. You know, it's um, it has a reaction for many people. Some are like, "Oh, this is great." Others are like, "Here go the drums again." But it's, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, I love it when they're just we we call it hacking, where yeah. they're just like they're just kind of tapping away or doing whatever, and it's it isn't organized, but it just means that there's something coming. Yeah, it's just like, and when they play together, they, I mean, I wish everybody could have an experience in the stadium on the center ladder during pregame when. The band comes just running out of the tunnel, and the crowd is going crazy, and the sound is, it, it, it is it's palatable on the All skin. Right, and I just wish everybody could experience that because, to be honest with you, that's pretty damn cool. Just this past week, not this current <laughs> week, but this past week with the terrible weather, mm-hmm. on Tuesday with the wind chill of nine degrees, and we were outside because we had to prepare for for the show on Saturday. Mm-hmm. We didn't have a choice, and so I'm like, well, all right, let's see how this goes. The sounds were just atrocious because <laughs> the instruments were frozen, but our students, how they reacted and how they ultimately rehearsed and got the job done was one of the most inspiring moments of my entire educational career. Really? Since I've been teaching 20 years. It was it was unbelievably impressive. Um, you know, and people ask, what's the best part of the job? And, I mean, it could be the performances. It could be the biggest stadium in the world, it, or in America, excuse me, or just, I mean, pick... The best part about it is our students. We have the best students ever. They are brilliant. They are intelligent. They're creative. They are dedicated. It's, we are very, very lucky here. Okay, so for anybody that has not been to a Michigan-Ohio State game, the energy is rather exciting. You absolutely must cue. On a, a Friday afternoon, we have the the stands full of fans to watch our rehearsals. They have have picnics and they have pizza delivered, and you know, I mean, it's just those kinds of things. Or we like we have four sets of twins in the MMB. Just, I didn't know that, you, right? And that's just oh mind boggling to me. Ever. It's great. Or four um, sets of twins. Four sets of twins right now. Uh huh. Currently, or you have some that have had grandpa. Mm hmm. Father, daughter, and future children are going to march. I mean, it's just that kind of thing just makes band in general really special. The band program here has been so good for so long that it's, it is basically the standard in terms of how to perform, how to I- engage with the public, how to be inclusive. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's a model and Every Every regard, you know, and I truly attribute that that. to the students. And also keep in mind, in the entire band program, we have 11 ensembles. The marching band's just one of Mm -hmm. those, right? And so when when the entire program is seen, just the quality of the ensembles from the School of Music, Theater, and Dance to the eight non-major ensembles that we have, it's Mm -hmm. just we we touch so many lives. And actually, thinking about it, the MMB is the most visible classroom on campus. And when you think about it that way. And then also, I would argue, one of the most visible classrooms in the world. That was better. Isn't it easier when it's warm outside? (laughs) Yeah, so many people are surprised at how challenging it is. You know, there's a stigma about band students. I would invite any of them to come and try it. You walk Bring around with on. a tuba and try to lift yeah, your you knees that high that. And, and play you, and remember all exactly. that stuff. Exactly, and having it memorized every single week, changing completely while going to school at a top-tier institution, while trying to get an internship at NASA, while trying to put <laughs> things on Mars. I mean, when you add it all up, I mean, it's very impressive what these students do. Even steps.
<laughs> so one of my questions was, if you were able to sit down with Dr. Ravelli mm-hmm. and George Cavender, how would that conversation go down? I would ask them for advice. You know, sirs, how am I doing? How can I get better? Um, am I keeping the standard that that has been set by you? I mean, we we take that very seriously. Our alumni have done a brilliant job in setting the standard with which we try to uphold Mm -hmm. every day. And so um, I just hope that we are, you know, every day. I'm like, is that how this is supposed to be? We have a a picture of him in our conference room, and it's a pretty prominent picture, and it's placed very prominently. (laughs) And I often wonder, I'm like, hmm, (laughs) sir, what do you think? (laughs) So um, I've only ever wanted to be a teacher. My father was a corporate executive and okay. um, and it was almost assumed that I was going to go into the family business mm-hmm. but all I really wanted to do was teach and then I realized in high school that I was pretty good at at my instrument so I'm like hmm maybe I should think about this and that was an interesting day when I told my my family <laughs> that I, I was going to major uh, on the tuba because I ultimately wanted to be a band director and they were like what <laughs> you're going to do what now <laughs> Oh, it's a phase. You'll get over it. It's fine. Um, but, you know, ever since then, I, it, it, it's been a calling, and I have loved every second of it. Well, I think clearly you obviously respect the students very much. Very much the so. The way you're speaking about them. Well, and I guess they know what they're walking into. They or Yeah, so. Well, actually, so no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, those that are <laughs> incoming have no clue. But they know what's a kind of what's expected of, of them in terms yes, of, of obviously they know what program they're applying to and what how, how, why they want to come to this You know, and program. we also are very careful to help them nurture themselves. The MMB has about 400 people in it, mm-hmm. but we only march 276 during halftime and 235 during pregame because they have to earn their spot gotcha. every, every week. So that helps for many reasons. One, it's life lessons, but two, um, you have to you have to be able to perform at a certain level before we would put you in front of such a large yeah. audience. Well, and that's clearly why our alumni are so fanatical, perhaps? <laughs> Energetic <laughs> is the term that I use. <laughs> About their um, connection to the band. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, our band alumni are really passionate. Indeed. And I, you know, I was looking right, at just looking at, you know, different theater. stories about why I love marching band and stuff like that. And just, you know, the, the camaraderie, obviously, and the life lessons and finding your place and finding your people and all that kind of stuff. This past fall, when we were going to the Ohio State game, our department administrator, mm-hmm, uh, Maggie, uh, uh, passed away suddenly on, on the trip going mm-hmm. down there. Oh. That was, uh, that was, devastating. The, uh, I'll be honest, that was the worst day of my life. And um, so for many, sorry. many reasons. So it, oh, no. Oh, so well, many people you, you, loved yeah, her. Thank you. I mean, she was an incredible human. The fallout from that, in terms of the support, public support all over the world, was so inspiring. I mean, from, I mean, we were going to OSU and they couldn't have taken better care of us. I mean, we were not in a very good place for many, many reasons. Right? I don't remember the game. I don't remember what show we did. I don't remember. I don't remember the score. I mean, I do now after the fact seeing it, but I don't remember that we lost. I don't remember. I really don't remember any of it except for how well they they took care of us in a very, very difficult time. You know, and that is a testament to what we're doing with bands. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's about music. It's about being a three-dimensional human being. It's about inclusivity and support. And, you know, I mean, it's a truly remarkable art form. Talk about um, grit, too. I mean, just that game this past season, that in the pouring oh, yeah. rain. Every time we play Notre Dame, it's a monsoon. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It's very strange. Um, yeah, it was, you know, that kind of stuff seems... It doesn't phase us at no. all. We're, we're out in it every day. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just... Um, fun. Yeah, it, it certainly builds character, <laughs> and we have a lot of character over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> We've got a lot of it banked up, I'll be honest with you. Oh, my God. I was laughing last night at rehearsal. Kids were literally putting their cases in, like, pre-made, like, parts of the snow. The snow banks. Like, they had sure. already created a shelf for themselves for where they're going to put their case in the snow. I'm like, that is tragic. You know, these past couple weeks have made me question my <laughs> uh, professional life choices. <laughs> I'm a southerner, right? Oh, so this, that's so I'm like, funny. what are we doing here? It's so cold. Oh, that's great. Well, what were some of your favorite shows this year? Like, My favorite show this year was... Uh, uh, so far um, was the collaboration we did with the College of Engineering and NASA. Mm-hmm. That was I such bet. a neat experience. We also did a show to honor Maggie. Um, mm-hmm. That was the uh, 
a Mary Poppins show that we did uh, at the end of September. That was her favorite music, so we honored her that day. That was a great show. Um, The uh, Veterans Day shows are always my favorite. So... um you you came up playing tuba. I did a tuba player. <laughs> Do you have affinity for your tuba? When I first came last night, I was standing near the tuba players, and I don't know. You're like, make it angrier. Or it needs to be louder, or something like that. And I heard them going, "Come on, let's destroy it. That's what he wants. Kill it." <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's really cute. Well, we're gonna have a conversation about that this <laughs> afternoon. Then. Oh no! No, it's very funny. I was no. fine. Yeah, I mean we. To be a tuba player, you have to be a special kind of personality. <laughs> so we all kind of band together, pardon the pun. But yeah, they're all great. So, but if an alumnus showed up today mm-hmm. and went into your classroom or joined practice, how would things be the same, and how would they be different? The expectations are the same. We, uh, you have to perform at the highest possible level. Period. That's our job. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they'll see that we take the tradition and legacy very seriously. It is something that we constantly are talking about and also trying to uphold. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that they would see that the pace of how we rehearse is different. Things happen very, very quickly. Um, I think that the style of the show is a bit different. Mm -hmm. I mean, times change, so we have to evolve that way. But, you know, marching band hasn't really changed that much. You think about it. You're on a football field in a polyester uniform, holding an instrument, making pictures with your bodies. You know, I mean, that part really hasn't changed. It's just how you interact with that. That's how things have um, changed. Uh, People say that the tempos of songs have changed a bit over the years. Um, That's interpretive, but um, for the most part, things really haven't changed very much. My job is... Shows on a field, you know, and I teach brilliant students. It's the best job ever, frankly. Um, things that keep me up at night are the student safety, are uh, their experience. Um, but I trust them to do their job. Yeah. I trust the staff to do their job. By the way, with the best staff ever, um, they're really good at it. And by the way, they operate this thing. I just stand up there and just wave <laughs> my arms around and smile and look pretty. They take care of everything else. I'm serious about that. And, um, and so because of that, I, I don't really, we don't really have any stress. It's just, I mean, it's energy, it's excitement, it's um, maybe anxious sometimes, mm-hmm. but stress, I think, is maybe not the right word because we aren't trying to cure cancer. We're not yeah. putting things on Mars. We're not keeping the country safe. Those, I would argue, are stressful jobs. That's true. We just get to do our hobby. I mean, <laughs> I mean marching band's a hobby, and I get to do that every day of my life. So. What's up with the backbend situation? I'm going to ask you the stupidest question no, ever. No, you know, but that's an ex <laughs> Where did that question. start? So the, the backbend itself has been around for quite a while. So a uh, drum major, Matthew Pickus, um, he was the first one to take the hat off and, and touch his head to the ground. Obviously, that was huge. And by the way, that is extraordinarily difficult. Um, so since he has done that, there's been a bit of a tacit uh, expectation. So when I was first hired here um, uh, 12 years ago, th- there was still an option. The drum major could take the hat off or could keep it on, which obviously makes it significantly yes. easier. So all the other schools that do the backman wearing oh. the hat, while it's probably not the easiest thing you've ever done, yes. it's way, way easier. So now it's a part of the audition where if oh. their head doesn't touch the ground, they typically um, don't advance to, to the final round. Wow. Yeah. And talk about stress. That, I would argue, is a yes. stressful environment because not only is every eye on you, you have sky cam, you have steady cam. My heart uh, raced uh, just thinking about it. Operators, right? Like six, six inches from your head. And <laughs> um, that, that would be a stressful uh, thing to do. But, you know, thankfully, we, we've had really talented students doing that job and they're really good at it. And so it's when, when their head touches the ground and the crowd just erupts that's a really special moment that's really really great alright that's it for the 2019 football season and the Michigan Marching Band it seems the more things change the more they stay the same It's all about the camaraderie, laughter, discipline, and as Pasquale puts it, life lessons. Frankly, I don't know how anyone can put up with that metronome. 
but I hope you enjoyed this little peek into the world of marching band here at Michigan. It's time to switch gears now and get ready for winter sports. It's going to be fun to witness Juwan Howard's first season as coach at Chrysler Arena. All right, you can find Listen in Michigan at Google Play Music, iTunes, TuneIn, and Stitcher. So please give us a shout out, and it'd be great if you would subscribe. Okay, that's it for now. I have something really good cooking for next time, too. Well, not technically cooking. It happens to do with, wait for it, squirrels. Okay, till then, go blue. All their little pre-game rituals that they're doing. Stretching. All right, boys, let's go. Go okay, everyone's in place. Okay.